This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 968, How to Stay in Vacation Mode Once It's Over, part two by Kristen Wong of thewildwong.com, and I'm Justin Mollick. Happy Sunday and welcome to the old podcast. It's the OLD podcast, Optimal Living Daily, where I simply read to you like a big ongoing audiobook with many different authors, but today being a continuation from yesterday, so I'd recommend listening to yesterday's episode first. I'm gonna be doing another book raffle on Instagram soon, so if you're not following us there, now's a good time. You can find us at Old Podcast. We post inspirational quotes from the authors we narrate across all five of the shows, plus pictures of us hosts and more. Again, you can find us on Instagram at Old Podcast. For now, let's get right to part two and start optimizing your life. How to Stay in Vacation Mode Once It's Over, Part 2, by Kristen Wong of thewildwong.com. Take better breaks. The old work-life balance thing is tricky. Many people believe it's not even possible or a good idea. I've given up trying to completely separate my work life from my personal life because so much of my work is based on what's happening in my personal life and vice versa. That said, however you decide to separate your personal life from your work life, it's important to step away from work regularly. You probably know that taking regular breaks can help with your cognition. It's like when you were in school and you couldn't figure out a math problem, but then came back to it later and the answer was so clear. However, most breaks we take as adults aren't good enough. Chances are your break probably involves scrolling through your Twitter feed, replying to emails, or extending your work in some other way. If a 2008 study is any indication, you should be going outside instead. Researchers found that subjects perform better on cognitive tasks after spending time in a calm, natural setting. To really give yourself a chance to get a little piece of vacation mode during your break, you have to sort of reset your mind. Mentally, that means leaving work behind, not just taking it with you into a different setting. Be a resident tourist. One of my favorite ways to get a little taste of vacation is to travel in my own city. Granted, I live in Los Angeles, where it's easy to find new stuff to explore and discover. However, when I lived in a rural Texas town, one of my favorite things to do was take weekend road trips. I would drive into Houston or Galveston or Eagle Lake. In college, I moved to Houston, where there was more to do, but I still had the urge to travel beyond the 610 loop. So on the weekends, I'd drive around with a friend, looking for historic sites and other points of interest. I was broke, so it was all I could afford, but it was also a cheap way to embrace novelty and learn something new about my state. Again, novelty helps you manifest the same perspective as you get on vacation and actually driving around and seeing new stuff feels like a vacation itself. Even if it was just for the day, I had no obligations to deal with, no schedule to stick to, and no plan except to explore. Learn to say no. I know, I praise the habit of saying yes, but it's just as important to learn when to say no to stuff too. Overextending your schedule is a surefire way to stress yourself out. And if you wanna make room for fun, spontaneous things that are worth saying yes to, that probably means you have to say no to certain things too. I talked about this in a Lifehacker post, but when I feel overextended with my schedule and out of control of my own time, I make a list of things I dread. These are normal tasks or obligations in my everyday life that I don't enjoy for one reason or another, maybe because they're boring or stressful. I might not be able to do anything about most of the stuff on the list, but that's not the point. I just write them down, then break them into three categories. One, things I can't really control, like tasks that are necessary for my job. Two, things I can totally do something about, favors I don't have time for, agreeing to take on extra work. And three, things that I don't wanna do but are good for me, working out or volunteering, for example. Once you have all of your obligations categorized, you can easily see what you do and don't really have control over, and then it just comes down to saying no to things that aren't making you miserable. It feels good to take back control over your own time. It's liberating. It gives you a small dose of vacation mode. Everyday life is not vacation. I understand that. If it were, vacation wouldn't be vacation. However, I also think it's way too easy for everyday life to stray far from the way we feel on vacation. Curious, liberated, creative, and motivated. You just listened to part two of the post titled, 
How to Stay in Vacation Mode Once It's Over by Kristen Wong of thewildwong.com. And just a really quick reminder that another book giveaway is coming up really soon on Instagram. You can follow us at Old Podcast. But I'll do it for today and this weekend. I'll be back tomorrow. So I'll see you there where your optimal life awaits.